In this video, we will learn about the instrumentation formulas. So, we will see what are the mostly used formulas in the instrumentation system. I hope you people will learn much in this video. So, first of all, we will see the temperature conversion so if we want to calculate the temperature in centigrade and we have some reading in Fahrenheit then we will use this formula centigrade is equal to 5 by 9 into Fahrenheit minus 32 so in this way we can convert Fahrenheit into the centigrade we will see it with if we have centigrade then how we can convert it into Fahrenheit then we will inverse our formula this will be 9 by 5 into centigrade plus 32 so in this way we can convert centigrade into Fahrenheit so this was the temperature conversion our next formula which is our second one in this we will see how we can convert the output PV into a milliamps so if we have a PV suppose we know what is the PV then we can measure what the output milliamps should be of a transmitter so we can roughly check that our transmitter is giving right output so the output milliamps will be equal to 16 divided by U R V multiplied by P V and then we will add plus 4 in this way we can calculate the output current or the milliampere of a transmitter here U R V is the upper range value and the PV is the process variable so let us suppose just for an example that we have the URV is 8 and our PV for example is 6 then what will be the output of the transmitter in milliamps we will put the value into the formula URV is 8 and PV is 6 we will solve it it will be 2 into 6 and plus 4 which is 12 plus 4 and our milliampere will be 16 milliampere so in this way we can calculate milliampere our next formula is how to calculate the PV if we know the milliamps of a transmitter so when we have the milliamps then we can convert that milliamps into the PV that formula is PV is equal to URV divided by 16 into the milliamps of the transmitter minus 4 so by this formula we can calculate the process value suppose our URV is 160 
and we will divide it with 16 here we suppose that our milliamps are 12 then what will be the PV we will put, put the values in this formula URV is 160 divided by 16 and 12 minus 4 so it will be 10 into 8 is equal to 80 so our PV should be 80 our fourth formula is about the load cell output millivolt calculation so we will see that what will be the output millivolt of a load cell if we know the its capacity and we know its millivolt per volt and we know what the weight we have put on the load cell so millivolt will be equal to the excitation volt into millivolt per volt of the load cell which is the specification of load cell and we will multiply it with load capped on the load cell divided by load cell total capacity so with this formula we can calculate that what will be the output millivolt this is the excitation volt we are supplying from the transmitter to the load cell suppose excitation volt are 12 and millivolt per volt of the load cell are 2 and we have put a load on the load cell we suppose this is 50 kg and the load cell total capacity we just suppose that it is 100 kg so what will be the output millivolt of load cell this will be 24 into 1 by 2 and after solving we will get 12 so this load cell should output 12 millivolt when we have put a 50 kg load and its capacity is 100 kg and it's 2 millivolt per volt load cell our fifth formula is about the wave feeder we have a belt wave feeder and we want to calculate its new factor in the calibration you people know we change the factor of the wave feeder so new factor will be equal to wave bridge reading we will take a drop test and we will check what is the weight on the wave bridge and we will see what is reading on the wave feeder we will note its totalizer and we will multiply it with the old factor suppose we have taken a drop test and we check it on the wave bridge this is 10 ton but the wave feeder totalizer was 9 ton suppose old factor is 1 then the new factor will be after solving we will get 1.11 multiplied by 1 so new factor will be 1.11 so we will give this parameter in the controller of wave feeder now the sixth formula in the instrumentation which are mostly used this is the wave feeder flow calculation so if we want to calculate 
how much ton per hour on the wave feeder we can calculate it if we know the following if we know what is the weight on load cell we will divide it with the effective platform length mostly effective platform length is 1 meter or 0.5 meter or 0.3 meter it depends upon the design that what is the design of the wave feeder we will multiply it with the speed which is in the meter per second and then we will convert it into ton per hour by multiplying 3600 divided by 1000 so the our result will be converted into ton per hour because our weight is mostly in kg so we have to convert it into ton and our time is mostly into second so we have to convert it into hours so suppose weight on load cell is 10 kg effective platform length is 0.5 speed is 0.2 meter per second so after putting in the formula and solving it we will get the result we will solve it so we will get 72 divided by 5 it will be approximately 18 point something ton per hour so in this way we can calculate belt wave feeder flow in ton per hour in this seventh formula we will see how we can calculate the speed of a wave feeder in meter per second so we can calculate speed by this formula we have to know the total belt length of the wave feeder or any belt we want to measure the speed total belt length then we will divide it with the time of one revolution so we will check its time per revolution that in how much time it completes one revolution so in this way we can calculate the speed of belt suppose total belt length is 60 and time per revolution is 60 so the speed is 1 meter per second now we check it with an other example that total belt length is 30 and time per revolution is 60 then the speed is 0.5 meter per second so in this way we can calculate the speed of a belt especially a wave feeder because we need to know the speed eighth formula is about the error percentage suppose in a wave feeder we want to calculate that how much error was in the calibration or in the drop test this is same for any transmitter which is a temperature transmitter or pressure transmitter so this formula is PV on the transmitter and PV actual which is the actual value we checked with some calibrator or some thing which is standard minus 1 into 100 so in this way we can calculate the error in percentage suppose transmitter showing 10 but actual is 9 we will put it in the formula so in this way we will get 0.1 into 100 we will solve it and 10 percent is our error if the PV on transmitter is 10 and PV actual is 9 then the transmitter error is plus 10 percent so we will check it with another example 
in which we will see if our error is in minus suppose PV on transmitter is 9 and PV actual is 10 so we will put it in the formula and we will solve it because transmitter is reading less so error should be in minus we will check it whether it is in minus we will solve it 0.9 minus 1 so our result is minus 0 0.1 into 100 we will solve it and this will be minus 10 percent so our error is minus 10 percent in this example so our next formula is about the span this is very easy span is equal to urv minus lrv urv is the upper range value and lrv is the lower range value of any transmitter we can calculate the span suppose urv is 100 and lrv is 0 then the span is 100 we will check it with another example suppose our urv is 150 and our lrv is suppose minus 50 especially for uh, temperature or pressure transmitter so we will solve it it will be 150 plus 20 so our span is 200 so by this formula we can calculate the span the next formula is the conversion so we will check in this formula how we can convert our PV to percentage suppose we have a PV and we want to know that how much the percentage is it of the total range so we can convert our PV into percentage in this formula we will check our percentage is equal to PV minus LRV divided by span and we will multiply it with 100 so in this way we can calculate the percentage that our PV is of which person suppose our PV is 50 and LRV 0 span is 100 then by solving we will get 50 so this is the 50 percent of our total range suppose we will check it with another example PV is 150 and LRV is minus 50 span is we suppose span is 200 then putting in the formula I am trying to explain you with the very simple examples so 200 divided by 200 in 200 we will get 100% so this is the 100%